So that okay, voice yeah. in your head when you're running that says, why are you doing this? Yeah. Please, for the love of all that is holy, have a seat because sitting is amazing. Yeah. If you have Just a lay drink down. Or, lay down. or two, <laughs> suddenly that voice is like, do what you want. Just keep running. Hey all, Amanda here. Welcome to episode 35 of Great Beer Adventure. I am on a mission to get healthy, but I refuse to give up beer. So I need to add more exercise to my regimen, which brings us to today's episode on running and beer. Now let me just say running is not my exercise of choice, but it is many people's, so we will start here. This isn't going to be a series on athletics and beer, but we keep coming back to this idea time and time again. The idea of beer and... There's so many different activities that you can do. Beer and yoga, beer and biking, beer and movies, that we will just keep coming back to it. Today, I sit down with one of the members of Portland's Hash House Harriers and learn about some beer drinkers with a running problem. Today I am at the King's Head, which is in Portland, Maine. You can hear the music. It's a very, very cold Monday, and not much seems to be open uh, in Portland on Monday. I am sitting at the table today with... Okay, ready? I'm going to try this. Come a, come a, come a... Man, I can't do the last one. You go. You say it. Come a, come a, commanda. Come a, come a, commanda. Okay. You so can just call me commanda. Commanda. Amanda, today's episode is brought to you by Amanda and Commanda. Okay, so anyways, um, it is a very cold night outside, but it's warm and cozy in here. Um, some beef jerky just showed up at the table, and we're having a couple of beers. And this is generally the spot of the show where I tell you what I've Googled about yourself, about you. Great. But I didn't even have a full name and then now I don't even have, like, a real name. I don't know. I couldn't do any Googling. So we're just going to skip that today. Perfect. All right. Is there anything that we should know about you that we're not going to get to later in this episode? Yeah. In 2001, I did a through hike of the Appalachian Trail. I actually turned 21 while I was on the trail. Wow. So I was able to get a lot of my calories through beer. <laughs> So I would say that I was fueled by beer to get from Georgia to Maine. That's one of my biggest accomplishments. Wow. So I'm very proud of myself for that little adventure yeah. so many years and many pounds ago and many, many beers ago. That's probably the biggest thing about me. Yeah. The nerd name that we don't say yet. But my <laughs> trail name while I was hiking the Appalachian Trail was Captain Natty. Captain Natty. Like Natty Light? Like K-N-A-T-T-Y because I have oh. really long dreadlocks. Yes, you do. You I did not have dreadlocks while I was hiking. No. In fact, that was my first haircut in many, many years was the day I started my hike. I can't imagine and that would add a lot of poundage. So 15 years ago was my last haircut. I'm about to get them trimmed in half on the 15-year anniversary to the day by the same woman who cut them the first time, my wonderful mother. Oh, wow. So it's very exciting. 2016 is going to be a big year for me. <laughs> yes, and your dreadlocks. That's right. The natties will get a little shorter. Yes, okay. That's very... That's a lot to wrap your head around. Yeah, all in you probably one wouldn't have found that Googling me. No. Google is pretty intense, but I don't know that they necessarily know that yet. They will. They someday. will now. They, they will, now. will now. They will. They'll have somebody like listening to the episode and be like, oh, that, what did you call it? Your nerd name? My nerd name, right. Your nerd name. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is so confusing. So many names. I don't even know what to do with myself. Let's move right into round one, just because Perfect. maybe beer will help the situation. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so in round one, we drink beer, and we are actually drinking the same beer today. Uh, we are drinking Foundation's Bedrock. Yeah, it's a porter. It's very dark. Uh, what I like about it on the nose is that it's really subtle. Like, it's not giving you a lot of, like, burnt notes or anything, but mm. it's definitely got that nice, like, smoky, that... that afterthought almost so it's not overpowering up front right um and i'm not a he i'm more of a hoppy guy yeah so 
when I am enjoying darker ales, I like them to have a little more complexity. And this is really, really subtle. So I'm not saying I don't like this. I like this for different reasons, I'd almost say. So hmm. I'm going to have another sip. All right. I think yeah, I like it. It kind of, I'm a dark beer drinker in the wintertime. I, uh, it gets dark really early and I'm like, all right, that means dark beers, right? right. It's the perfect beer for today. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, um, my walk down here, I'm from the West End. Yeah. So our first bar and then that being closed and walking here, like I it's a little chilly, so this is going to warm me up just right. <laughs> a little chilly. I hope that's an understatement because yeah. it, yeah, it's it 18 is. degrees right now outside. Yeah, it, uh, it's stupid cold. I um, I actually will get in trouble by my daughter if she knows knows I call it stupid cold because she's like, stupid is not a nice word. It's not a nice word. No, it's not nice weather though either. <laughs> it's really really cold. It's, it's um, stupid cold. I, it's I agree. Stupid cold. <laughs> um, so. This is kind of out of the norm for Foundation, it seems. They do kind of play around with some different things. Yeah. Um, but when I think of Foundation, I think more of their uh, Saisani, farmhouse beers. Yeah, correct. Beers. I'm a huge fan. What's that beautiful hoppy one? Is it, are they Zephyr? They're, no, that would be Rising that's Tide. That's Rising Tide. Epiphany, too. Epiphany, thank you. Yeah, Epiphany. It's like, that's not really one of their... Like, There's, you think about them beers, but it's one of their biggest beers. Right. <laughs> it's The problem with the, not problem, it's a wonderful problem we have here in Maine, is all the breweries doing all the wonderful things around various styles of beer. Right. So that's why all the Rising Tides and and Foundations and Bissell Brothers and Maine Beer Company all are logged in my brain as yeah. delicious. Yeah. I can never pull out the right <laughs> name at the right time. Yeah, you're like, it's remember a- that beer place that's really good with that really great beer? Yeah, Maine. Yeah, it's right. pretty much Maine. Right. Um, yeah, I keep trying to tell all my uh, friends and listeners uh, to you, you need to come here. If you're not from here, you need to come here on a beer destination trip of some sort. So even just going to Brewery Row, like out where Allagash is, yeah, being able to hit all those four breweries in the same day for less than twenty bucks, you can drink delicious beer and really get a taste for the main beer scene. Right, and, and Allegash right is just giving you free beer, and then the other three, they're a lot smaller. Correct. But they're still not charging you an awful lot for it. And there's always a food truck over there. And then you go over to East Bayside, and then you've got all those breweries, plus you can have mead, kombucha, cider, and distilled products as well. It's just great. Like, two huge spots, and it's just crazy. It's amazing. We're really spoiled. Really spoiled. Very, very spoiled. Okay. So we could talk about this, but I would rather just drink the beer and move on to why we're really here today. Perfect. Okay. So here, we're here today because I came up with this um, idea of wanting to do beer and. So beer has become such a bigger thing than just beer. It's become a culture. It's become a, you know... It's part of what people do, you know, like you were talking about hiking and it was beer was like something that was a big part of that for you. Yeah, I'd spend all that time in the woods and then just think about a cold, delicious beer. I mean, everyone's gone for a hike. I, right. Ideally, everyone's gone for an overnight hike <laughs> where the first they want, the thing they want to do when they get back into a town is where's a beer. Right. And so I think that beer's become such a bigger thing. And now there's all kinds of things out there, you know, beer and yoga. You can go to breweries and do yoga. There are big bike events with brew fest attached to them. I just watched Star Wars Episode 7. It doesn't matter how many times I've seen it. But I watched <laughs> it at a theater that serves beer during the film. So you just put your menu up. And they come over and they whisper, like, would you like some more beer? And I go, yes, please. <laughs> it's phenomenal. It's the first so time I've ever had a beer in movies. Perfect. So Excellent. It's not, but as much as beer for some of us, those of us passionate about the scene, that is the thing we do. It complements everything else that you do. You know, like whether it's movies or yoga or biking, it's it just it's the perfect uh, sidekick. Right, exactly. And I like that. It is a pretty good sidekick. Um, so today we're actually here to talk about beer and running. When this first entered my head, I was like, oh, they have all these five K's. With a brew fest at the end of it. And I was like, oh, I'll find somebody that does that. And now I'm buddied up with Dano. 
And Dan was like, oh, I love the idea for beer and running. You need to meet my friend. Uh, he used your nerd name. Perfect. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, that sounds great. And he's like, here's his running group. Look at this. And I learned not all about, but a little bit. And I even went on some uh, hashtags under Instagram. And that's where I got really scared when I was learning about the Hash House Harriers. Correct. I did. I was able to do that much of research. <laughs> okay. So this is my understanding of it. Okay. So somebody is a hare. Correct. And you all meet up, and that hair runs out, and they ride all over the ground. Yep, they lay a trail. But is that how they do it, like by writing? Yep, they can use chalk or flour or colored, um, like, carpenter's chalk. Basically, various symbols. Okay. Um, so there's, like, this whole symbols set that you need to know. This seems really, really scary. I'm not good with directions. I would get lost. Well, it's, so it's really social. And, and I'll get more into it, but I want to keep hearing yeah, okay. uh, what you <laughs> my interpretation of correct. Okay, so somebody goes out, and they are called a hare, and then everybody else, and they go and they chase them down based on this um, trail that they've left, and it's basically like an urban like hunt for this. Yeah, it's hare. a scavenger hunt, right? And you're trying to find this, and do they go to another place to get drinks? We generally start at a bar. There can be drink checks at a drinking establishment or at someone's house, or maybe it's in the woods stashed somewhere ahead of time. Okay. And so you drink and then you run. Correct. I can't run. I can't imagine trying to drink and run. I've seen these like beer drinking mile sure. things. And oh, the, those... that's, that's a story for another time. I've done a, a beer mile. It's I'm not proud of my time. I'm still working on it. But wait, that, <laughs> so that that's that vo that's an aside. So that okay, voice yeah. in your head when you're running that says, "Why are you doing this?" Yeah. Please, for the love of all that is holy, have a seat because sitting is amazing. Yeah. If you have Just a drink, lay down, or, lay down. Or two. <laughs> suddenly, that voice is like, "Do what you want. Just keep running." Really? Because see, when I way back when, before I was a sophisticated drinker, I got a. Way more than tipsy. And so there, I have this one particular memory where I was not feeling well the next morning. And I knew I had to be sick. So my plan was go and run because that will make you be sick. Okay. So I don't see... For now, me. were you successful? Y yes. So your goal was to be sick. In <laughs> yes. hashing, your goal is to just keep drinking. And it's not... I'm not beer in hand running after the hare. And the, the kennel, or hounds, those are the ones chasing. It's an old game of of hare and hounds yeah. from, from the UK that a bunch of like expats put together uh, when... It happened in Kuala Lumpur, I believe, is where the first hash happened. They're at a hash house eating breakfast, and one of the guys says, Hey, my doctor says i got to quit drinking or exercise. And all his drinking buddies are like, No. Why don't we drink while we exercise? <laughs> and that's how hashing started. And it's all over the world. There's over 2,000 different running groups. And the whole goal, there's really a couple of like tenants of hashing. And it's really to cure the weekend hangover, to make the oldest members not feel so old, to have some fun, and above all, to drink. Because we're drinkers with a running problem. We're not runners, we're not athletes. Although when we're out on a run and we see someone running by, we make it a point to try and pull them in and say, you're running the wrong way. The beer's over here. <laughs> and that can be a lot of fun. We've met a lot of cool people who've actually become hashers or reformed runners who then become hashers, which is, it's a beautiful thing. All right. So none of this actually sounds, I mean, r running sounds really scary, but none of it really sounds that bad. But there are prom dresses involved. Right. So, And that a, part, I don't know what to so, do with. So there's, so there's some debauchery involved in hashing. You know, everyone gets a hash name in our kennel, which you can find. Can I plug my website? Yeah, go for so it. So PortlandHashes.com. I'll even throw a link up on the uh, Perfect. show notes. And there's roughly four to 500 of us that are 
associated with the group, but I would say on a regular run, no more than 20. And now that it's getting cold, we're we're kind of paring down those numbers, so there's at least enough people to chase someone. And the older I get, the less I've been hashing, but a lot of that just comes down to, you know, time. But when you look at hashing, there's a lot of themes and debauchery. You know, it's a it's drinking and running. So we like to come up with themes to encourage people to come out. So we have yearly prom runs where the gentlemen generally get dresses. It's about a week after the high school prom. So the Goodwills are filled with prom dresses. I look very good in a dress, I've discovered. Okay. It's very liberating, too, to run around the streets of Portland and wearing a dress with your buddies, also wearing dresses, and show up at these bars and really just destroy gender expectations that's amazing now in some places that might be out of the norm but i feel like it's a little bit more accepted here i mean portland's been really embraced us i mean even with local law enforcement where we've been running down the street and you know we're blowing whistles because we want to keep in communication with people who are farther behind us they've asked us hey what are you guys doing We're like oh we're we're hashing like all right move along have fun because we're not causing any kind of issues i mean there might be some casual trespassing once in a while but that's just like the corner of someone's yard you know just real quick <laughs> it's, it's casual yeah, trespassing casual. <laughs> it's just the corner of your property right. you're cool we're it's, cool it's, you know, it's, it's just a little casual bit, there's parkour elements it's, it's a lot of fun so there's a lot of themes there's a lot of innuendo and at the end of the day it's an opportunity to it's a zero sum activity I'm consuming calories the most delicious calories you can beer <laughs> And I'm running, so I'm burning calories. So my last hash was this past Friday, New Year's Day, and it was the hangover hash called Stairway to Heaven. And we did elevation gain all over the city. And what? One, so it was all up and down. Uh. And according to my technology, it said that I did 37 floors of elevation gain or loss within, f- we did about 4.6 miles. And it's not running nonstop. So you'll follow trail markers. And then there'll be a check, which means you have to do something at a check. Maybe reveal a body part, maybe tell a joke, maybe hug, maybe uh, do a group sit, maybe sing a song. Did I say say a joke? Yeah, tell a joke. Yeah. And then you all disperse looking for more arrows or or trail marks. So you're not like drinking and then running 4.6 miles. Like that sounds awful. That's that not sounds... that's not fun. No. But if I drink and then say, "Hey, I'm going to run a block and then wait for everyone else to catch up." And then you run a little bit farther and so on and so forth. So the people who are the front runners, and I won't use the full term because it's inappropriate, but the people up front who are <laughs> okay. really fast. I appreciate the that. The speed runners, if you will. Those social checks slow them down and it gives an opportunity for all the the DFLs are dead last to catch up. And that way our our kennel or all the hounds aren't completely like separate all over the city and we're not losing our you know, people who the first time the hash are called virgins. We we don't want to lose all the virgins. Like that'd be awful. <laughs> yes. If you showed you up at be this in trouble. great hash event, you would be Virgin Amanda. And okay. when someone said who made you come, you'd say, Come a come a commanda. I would be your sponsor. Okay. And then you'd come hash with us. You'd drink a beer and you'd run around and you'd... So, so how many beers do you drink? So there are no rules in hashing, only traditions. Okay, so how many so beers pre-lube, per... Pre-lube, where that's the beginning of the hash, where okay. you get lubed up and get ready. You drink as much as you want, and that's up to you. While you're on trail, there's at least one beer check, if not two. And if it's a really high miles or high miles, low smiles, there might be three drink checks. So that'd be three beers... Or a jello shot, or oh. ho- hootie tang, which is like vodka and Gatorade, so it hydrates and is a diuretic. These sound oh, like they're just and you're drinking about... a lot of domestics too. You're not drinking high end good beer because hash cash is generally five dollars. Here's my five dollars. Thank you so much for letting me drink all day. So that's what you invest. So the hair ahead of time is like purchased the beers that they're going to share with the kennel. And then your $5 can go pretty far because quite often there'll be beers left over at a beer check. Like, all right, who's going to drink that beer? And, oh, it's time to go. So down, down. So there's a lot of, like, rugby songs and a lot of old, like, military songs to get people motivated to then drink all the beer. 
This just makes my stomach hurt so bad. <laughs> and and there are some people who abstain completely. For instance, when one of our hashers found out she was uh, with child and pregnant, she still hashed all the way up to the beginning of her third trimester, and she just drank coconut water. Hmm. Yeah, and then no one's ever going to... I think the beauty of our kennel, especially in Portland, Maine, where we're the only kennel in this major metropolitan area, is we're pretty accepting. There's not a lot of hazing. There are some kennels, like in Boston, they don't want you to come back. And I'm not speaking dispar- disparagingly of the Boston kennels because there's like five of them. I'm not going to like single one out. But the goal is let's have fun and run and drink some beers. That's that's kind of how Portland, Maine is. And we're known as being pretty hardcore because we do big miles. And at the end, when we have religion or circle, and I'm going to air quote religion, <laughs> we we don't like that to be the focus of our run. So we'll do it real quick. Let's just drink beer. And then we're done. Say our little hash prayer and then go go to the bar for on after. So the end is on in. The beginning is pre-lube. The middle is beer checks. And when you're done, it's on after. So do you have like a, a handbook? Because it seems to be a lot of things that you There's need. a lot of traditions. Yeah. Absolutely. And at the beginning of every run, the RA or uh, religious advisor or resident uh, butthead RA... <laughs> he or she will kind of go over chalk talk and explain to everyone this is the goal of today if there are virgins there we go in like depth this is what you can expect and it's on purpose kind of made to be overwhelming because these people show up and they're just like bright eyed like what have I signed up for and then they realize that we run a hundred yards stop goof around run a hundred yards stop goof around and they're like this isn't so bad because when people hear running and drinking they think that they're running down the street like drinking beer yes it sounds like even like i'm listening and i'm not quite you're not quite sold i'm not i'm definitely my elevator pitch isn't quite there i need them i need 30 seconds <laughs> yeah. and you'll be a hasher because you're already halfway there you're I, drinking a beer i like beer <laughs> the problem is is i don't have any kind of running problem whatsoever <laughs> that's like a big back for me but <laughs> it doesn't sound as Parts of it doesn't sound as scary. Other parts are even worse than sure, I thought. Sure. Um, but yeah, it doesn't sound like the running piece is necessarily necessarily the scariest part. I've met some of my best friends hashing. It's it's beautiful. It, would you say that you, this collects a lot of people different? A lot of different people? Yeah, there's people all all walks of life ages we've got teachers we have lawyers we have writers we have brewers we have people in retail and service and everywhere in between and all ages i mean our youngest are 21 and i don't know how old our oldest is but they're great wow well it sounds like a lot of fun it sounds like the most intense drinking game i've ever heard of it's and then there are these spin-off events where we do like hash practice So it's not part of the canon of hashing, because we always want to document our hashes. So it's not, like, part of lore of poor me, H3, because hash house harriers. Right. Okay. And we did a beer mile last year, and it was the worst thing I've ever done. It was terrifying. (laughs) I chugged an Allagash White. I ran a quarter mile. I chugged an Allagash White. I ran a quarter mile. Repeat until I had four beers. I did it in... It was like 11 minutes or something. It was awful. Like, I really wanted to do a sub 10 minute mile, but drinking beer is hard. Like, yeah. fast. I can't, I mean, yeah. I cannot chug. Like, I literally cannot chug a beer at all. I, I've i never gotten that talent. <laughs> like, I, it's, it's not something I would ever probably put in like a resume, the, the chugging <laughs> aspect, right? You should definitely look into the beer mile and all the different... They, they The world record keeps being broken recently. It's like this big thing. Both the female and the male is sub five. five sub five minute miles. Chugging four beers. It's yeah, insane. That is insane. Like, that really makes insane. me... I, that has to be the craziest buzz anyone's ever had. Because when you stop, that that's the only rule in beer miles. If you ever vomit, you have to do an extra lap. But still, it's terrifying. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds worse. Like, completely and totally worse than... It's terrifying. Yeah. But hashing is casual and fun, and yeah, there's some run. I mean, the worst... We constantly say all this running's getting in the way of my hash. (laughs) 
Yeah, I would think that that would be a problem. But generally you can expect to do about 3.5 to just under 6 miles any given week hashing with our particular kennel. We do fat boy runs, which is less than 3 miles, and that's really well advertised. And then we do tough boys, which is you know you're going to do more than 5 miles. And it kind of just lets people know ahead of time what they're doing. We did a faux half marathon hash, which was about, it wasn't the true 12, Mm -hmm. what, 12.1? 13. 13.1. We did about 12 Mm miles-ish. That was exhausting. I can imagine. That was three three beer checks. And did you have to, like, tell jokes in the middle one? There weren't a lot of social checks. It was basically a run. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that. You'd be like... Mile 11. So there was this one time I decided to sign right. up for this event. My favorite joke at a at a joke check is this trail. <laughs> yeah. That would be... A, that's a... Yeah. Sounds pretty intense. Okay. So anything that we haven't covered about beer and running or hashing... Um, you said that... Oh, I do have one more question. And then if you have anything that you would like to add... Yeah, perfect. Um... My final question is you said that um, something about keeping them on record or documenting them. Like, I found some stuff on Instagram with your hashtag, but I'm not a lot of That's more of a visual representation. I would say the hash trash, which is where we trash the previous hash we were just on, that is an actual log of recent hashes. We are struggling to keep up with that volume. It's very difficult to get people committed at the beginning of a hash. Hey, remember all this and write about it. And then, oh, yeah, drink all these beers, too. So could you do like a video on our particular website right now? It's all text based for trashes. That could be kind of a cool just shortcut. What you do is just hook a GoPro to somebody's head. We've talked about that. It'd be really fun, especially a GoPro of the hair and then a GoPro of maybe someone who knows they're going to be uh, last Yeah, and kind of edit it so that it's side by yeah, side. Yeah, you can just do the side by when side. when you're a hair, that's the most terrifying. Like, the feeling of being chased is a really bizarre feeling. And knowing that people are chasing you and you're, you're maybe you have a co-hair, so you have a buddy who's helping you lay the trail. There's a lot of these crazy conversations like we gotta go we gotta go knowing that we asked for 15 minutes head start and they're at some bar and they get to settle their tab and they're drinking like they're not gonna catch i mean i've been caught before but when you get caught either they they pants you or you you just you just get shamed you get shamed (laughs) oh yeah i wouldn't you don't want to be caught no i i've also caught people and done a catch and release where i say i'm just gonna run with you guys because I'm way ahead of everyone else. So where, where, where do you want to go? How can I help? That seems less scary. <laughs> there's a lot There's a lot of camaraderie. All right. So other than the pantsing, is there anything final that you would like us to know about? I think when it comes to hashing, it's all a mindset. And people need to don't knock it till you try it. It does sound terrifying. It's hard to do it justice. It is drinking and running. But we're drinkers with a running problem and anyone anyone can do it it's a lot of fun so check us out okay and what was the website they can go to again portlandhashers.com and a lot of our media is on there and all our social links are up there and i apologize in advance it is for adults so it is a 21 plus we always encourage responsible driving to get to and from any and all hashes and we have done kid-friendly hashes where we're not necessarily drinking beers we also change the tenor and tone and lyrics of a lot of our drinking songs so it can be more family friendly um we have asked for a heads up on people who have gluten uh sensitivities or we call them lovingly glutards in our kennel which is very uh uh, pc i'm sure of us (laughs) but really it comes down to if you want a hash you should you should check it out and there should be a kennel in any major metropolitan area in the world I've hashed in San Francisco. I've hashed in Virginia. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a blast. Wow. Okay. Now that you've thoroughly scared me. Perfect. Uh, let's move on to round three. Round three is um, back to you. And it is, what is your first beer memory? First beer memory. When I was about five years old, I remember my uncle and my late father 
they were when they would play backgammon and I really enjoyed watching them play because they were really competitive and they would do a lot of just banter back and forth and it was mm-hmm. very, it was just super competitive and I didn't understand all the language they were using but I knew that they were dissing each other and I thought it was very cute and years later being told that this very uncle was who driving my father to marry my mother like dropped him off on the side road and took off so there's my old man in <laughs> in the late 70s in an all white tuxedo on the side of the road all alone and then it's you know my uncle coming back around to be like all right are you sure you want to do this that, that was your out so just kind of knowing that relationship so i'm kind of you know peeking up over the table on tippy toes watching this weird game with like there's dice and there's these different colored tiles and sometimes they let me shake the thing but i also remember my uncle always drinking out of this big mug and he drank bud heavies oh so budweiser king of beers he asked my old man he's like it's cool if the little one has a sip he's like well it can't hurt so i had a sip of budweiser at five years old it was the worst thing i've ever uh drank uh to this day i'd say i mean hopefully budweiser is going to be a future sponsor I mean, if they really want to. So, Inabev, <laughs> uh, you heard it here first. If you'd like to sponsor this podcast. You have to support I, all uh, of the craft breweries That's right. Yeah, around. could you just stop being a bully? Could you right. start there, Inabev, being yeah. the American king of beers, which is a Belgian-owned company? Like, that's a podcast for another time. <laughs> so, all that being said, I had my sip. Uh, yeah, it was, it was terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. But that's not that's such a great story. Yeah, it's, like, it, I mean, hold on to it. It's good. And I and I've still I've had great conversations and beers since then with my uncle, like talking about old memories he's had of my father. And that's been really it's been fun. Very yeah. full circle. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it's very heartwarming. Beer. I know that it was about uh, them making fun of each other. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> but, it, you know, you do you do know that like a lot of that. My father is of that generation where. You know, love is shown through making fun of people. Of course. And of course. that is a... Uh... It was very endearing. Yeah. Um, okay, so round four, our final round. We lovingly refer to this as three sheets of the wind, three random questions. Great. They're not really random. They just don't have anything to do with beer. Okay. Okay? So, first question. Back when you were five-year-old, stealing Bud Heavies... What was your favorite cartoon? Oh, wow. Uh, five. It could be your favorite cartoon from when you were Yeah, young. no, I would say my earliest real cartoon memory is probably six or seven, where it really locked in, and this was my favorite cartoon. And I didn't fully understand the cartoon, and I've rewatched it since. But I was a huge Danger Mouse fan, which oh. was not... I, don't even, I think it's British. I don't think it's American, but my Nana... So my my father's mom, when we stayed at her house, not only did we, get, did we have the opportunity to gorge ourselves on Wonder Bread toast and butter, <laughs> but she loved giving us sour cream and onion potato chips. So my sister and I would like eat our toast and butter, and then as a snack, sour cream and onion chips, <laughs> and watch Danger Mouse. Hmm. And it was excellent. And I, then when I was a little older, it was He-Man. It was, all, it was all about He-Man. He-Man, yeah. We've had that one. I don't know that I've ever heard. Check it out. It, it, it holds up. It'll it be up. it'll be on our show he has notes. An eye patch. Really? Oh, he's great. Danger Mouse is great. He's got a little mole guy that helps him out. They go on the old school red British like phone booth thing. Oh yeah. Not, not TARDIS esque, but and that helps them get into their secret layer. It's it's pretty good. It's very James Bond esque, but he's a mouse. <laughs> okay, we'll check that out. <laughs> All right. Now there's a lot of Johnny Cash esque music going on around our heads. Which I am completely having a hard time staying focused because of it. I love Johnny Cash so much. Of course. But what song, other than that, is stuck in your head right now? Oh, interesting. Um, as I say, we um, try to keep it interesting here on Great Beer Adventure. Grizzly Bear, Two Weeks. I don't know what that is. It's an excellent, excellent song. I had the album, I think it's Vetmigus, Vetmus, and uh, my buddy gave me the album. It was in my car playing for about a year, that album, just when I went here, there, and everywhere. I was not good at taking out the CD and putting in another album. (laughs) And it wasn't until two weeks to the day of breaking up with a girl that I heard that song and heard the lyrics, 
and that was like, oh, what's the name of the song? This is like hitting me. This on this like <laughs> beautiful. It's just tugging at my heartstrings. I was like, oh, it's named Two Weeks, and I'm just like teared up. My eyes were a little sweaty. So the name of it's Two Weeks. And I heard and the what song. What is Grizzly Bear then? Grizzly Bear is the name of the band, okay. and the name of the album, or the name of the album is the Vet McGuys. Or, but if you look up Two Weeks, Grizzly Bear, it's an eerie, weird music video. That's not important, but the lyrics, <laughs> the lyrics involve running too, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Full circle. Look at that. Yeah. That's <laughs> You're full of things I have never heard of or even contemplated in my life. It's a good thing this is being recorded, so you can go back and do research. I'm gonna, yes, I am gonna have to go back and listen to this just to understand what the hell happened tonight. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Last question. What is the best thing you had to eat this week? This week. All right. So as we munch on this beef jerky. Yes. I was an ovo lacto pescatarian for 10 years. So dairy, fish, eggs, but primarily plant-based until this past September where I had a little bit of poutine and I decided to do monthly meat sheets or... If meat is ever provided for free, <laughs> I will ingest and have some fun with it. The That being said, when this plate of beef jerky was placed out, I was like, I'm going to put that in my belly. <laughs> I, I won't say this is the best thing I've had. It was yesterday. I had my parents go to the same butcher since I was a kid. And so it's free range. or They can't call it organic because the pigs do eat table scraps that involve foods that are technically processed somewhere like old donuts or whatever mm -hmm. but Bisson's Farm in Topsom, Maine bacon yesterday at brunch perfection and that's not even my January meat sheet yesterday or today for, for the record for the record <laughs> having rabbit stew later this month with a friend so, and that's and your meat sheet my meat sheet is it's a full day of just eating meat so these are just like meat cheat prequels this is like uh, the a moose bush Yeah. It's the teaser. The teaser. It's the trailer. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Uh, so, so bacon. 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 Was it just a big pile of bacon? Like, I only allowed myself to have two slices because it wasn't a meat sheet. Right. So two slices. And did you have anything with it or was it just oh, the bacon? Then I had... Um, Delicious eggs that my mom made, and toast, and uh, home fries. She made really nice home fries. Mm. I really am horrible at home fries. Really bad. I went bad. to Hot Supper earlier today. I can't go to that had... place. They don't have an R at the end of their name. But we're in Maine. I know. It's not supper, it's supper. No, it's I can't. It's not dinner, it's dinner. Oh, no. I've worked really long and hard to use every single letter in the alphabet. That's fair. Yeah. It's, I can it's appreciate not really that. Fair. It's not really even remotely fair. I've heard they're really good, but continue on. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, so I had. I mean, I had eggs and hash browns today. No, no bacon though. No. I was underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. It was the bacon that made it. That was the highlight of the week. I mean, if we're gonna say the week starts, does the week start on Sunday? I mean, do we need to? Is it the last seven days? Uh, it's really because I did have my December meat sheet just just after Christmas. So we're talking. No. So it seems like your meat sheets are like the fluid. highlight of your... Well, I didn't eat any kind of meat for 10 years, and now I'm back on the wagon, or I fell off the wagon. I don't Wherever know. Wherever the people eat meat, that's where I am. <laughs> so, but if it's like the best thing that you eat... Should I it, just go it, back? It feels like you're depriving yourself. It's, you're like... I, I do it for... I'm trying to be conscientious for health reasons. Yeah. And there I are... found that as someone who loves beer... I'm generally at pubs, so the food I'm eating is chicken fried steak and All double right, fair fried enough. this, that, and the other. So for me to be conscientious and be primarily plant-based, which I am most days out of the month until recently, <laughs> it's uh, I think it's it's good. How does mom feel about beer with brunch? Beer with brunch? Yeah. Mom is a teetotaler. She doesn't drink at all. And so you didn't... Oh, that's not fair. She has... She'll have, like, a glass of white Zinfandel <laughs> once a year and get tipsy, and it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, but I, I I, am the drinker in the family. No one else. Or as, you know, I'm, I'm unky to my nieces 
And so it's Unky Soda, because they don't like bubbles, so that's good. They'll yeah. I will never give them a taste. I will not be the, as my uncle was to me. Right. That's not a tradition that I'm going to pass off. Plus, it wouldn't be Budweiser. It'd be something delicious like main beer company. Uh, and Peeper. then you would have them hooked when they were five. <laughs> and that would be horrible. Right. That's not sustainable. No. <laughs> they would steal all your beer. Um, so I'm guessing then you did not pair it. With a beer, your I bacon. I did not. I did not. My food, uh, my food highlight was not paired with beer. Although it was Sunday and I had the day off. This is my fourth, fourth day off away from work. All that being said, I watched some of the sports ball yesterday. Some of the, the oh, football. I've heard of that. Yeah. The sports, the sports, yeah, where and they score the points yeah. and people win, and then the bad guys score points and the good guys right. have to score points. So right. I had Founders all day IPA. And that comes in a 15-pack because all day should last about 15 beers, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. 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 And that, that was my that was my post-bacon beer. Post-bacon beer. If you had have paired your bacon with a beer, what would you have chosen? I, I'm actually sold on this porter we're drinking now. I think that that, that would, would go been very a... well. It's it's pairing very nicely with yeah. the jerky. So. Agreed. Okay. Maybe yeah, we definitely sh- with, with meat, I th- that's something I'm looking forward to on my meat sheets because I haven't been drinking beer and eating meat for 10 years so i haven't like had an opportunity to pair certain beers with certain foods right so i'm looking forward to that opportunity like <laughs> yay beer and meat once a month and right. then just beer <laughs> right like don't go crazy no i'm not gonna give up beer that's that's silly yeah that'd be crazy all right anyways that brings us to the end of our show awesome all right i am completely mind boggled I hope that our listeners gain something out of this show because I'm sure they I did. have more questions. That's perfect. Than I have answers at well, this point. Well, if they reach out and have questions, we can do a follow up anytime. This is a lot of fun. I really I'm looking forward to listening and subscribing and hearing about some of the other podcasts. Cause I need to get caught up. You do. This we've got twenty seven, eight, nine, somewhere number. Perfect. <laughs> Episodes. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Yeah, cheers. And cheers to you. Thank you. Thanks. If you love scavenger hunts, or running, or beer, or dressing up in prom dresses, and doing all those things together, make sure you check out A Hashing House Near You. If you head over to our show notes, greatbeeradventure.com slash 035, we will have links for you to learn more. The show notes are also home to YouTube clips of cartoons and music. While you are there, sign up for our newsletter. We are in the process of revamping it and we'll be bringing you a bunch more content and giveaways in the next couple of months. The newsletter, once we get it going in full swing, will be your best bet to not miss out. The music throughout today's episode is by Old Etc. out of Biddeford, Maine. To learn more about them, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash music. We have new things headed your way every week and can't wait to share them with you. Special thanks to our behind-the-scenes guru, Dano Pugach. Today's episode was created, produced, and edited by me, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Want to know more? Be sure to find us on Instagram at Great Beer Women. If you haven't done so already, be sure to head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash subscribe to subscribe. That way, you'll be the first to know when a new episode goes live. Also, don't forget to tell your friends about us. A small party is fun, but a huge party is extraordinary. Let's get more people knowing about beer in the great state of Maine. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society. You did it. I did it. I don't... Okay. So... So why is there so much sexual innuendos in... It's the beer, I think. It's the beer. Everyone...